Thank you very much for coming. This is one of a series of events which has been organised across the European Union. This is your chance as members of the public to have your say about the future direction of the European Union. On my right is Vivian Redding, the Vice President of the European Commission, the Commissioner for Justice, Fundamental Rights and Citizenship. On my left is David Liddington, the British Minister for Europe. So I'm going to open it up to the floor now. This chap here in the blue shirt. Yes, sir. All of us here, most of us here, I think, are all citizens of British citizens, but we're also European citizens. Uh, do you see the value of European citizenship? Uh, do you see the importance of the values that underpin it, that people are calling for these values in the Ukraine, on the streets of Ukraine yeah. at the moment? Do you not see that it's nothing to be afraid of, this European citizenship that we have in addition to our British citizenship? And uh, Commissioner Redding, what are you going to say to uh, David Lillington or his successor in a, in a government uh, when Britain threatens to leave the European Union. And I'm glad that you've reserved so many seats for the Eurosceptics. It's a pity they didn't come. Um, the, um, what are you going to say to David when he says to you, we don't want to have any more freedom of movement. We just want freedom of, mo of capital movement, freedom of goods and services. We want to be like Switzerland. Europe is cultural diversity. And that is how it should be. I'm Luxembourger. I'm coming from a proud country with its own language, its own culture, having the Luxembourgian flag, the European flag, and knowing why. Because we have been neutral several times in our history. That was when we were swiped away, uh, First World War, Second World War. We do not want this to happen anymore. We want our freedom. We long our independence. And I always say to my voters, if we want to keep our culture and our language, the only way to keep it is to be in the European Union. And that is also something the Ukrainians have understood. They want freedom, they want self-expression, they want democracy. And they know they can only get it to be free people when they are in the European Union. And I tell you, it sometimes makes good when you see people in the snow, in the cold, with a European flag and saying, please, 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 Europeans, free us and we will free them. This influence of what has happened yesterday in Switzerland, for instance, does has had an influence on us. And uh, is it possible uh, to uh, have a European Union with bits and pieces? It is so important that we are a union of people. We are not only a market. The market is important for people to live, for people to have mm. jobs, and we have to develop this market, and we have to make it stronger. But in the end, it is for the people to live well. And so you cannot separate market here and only market and then something else in the distant future, no. And that is why the basis of the European Union are the four freedoms, you quoted them. The freedom of movement for capital, I think this city is interested. The freedom of movement for goods, for services, we have a lot of work to do on the services. Mm. And the freedom of movement for citizens, who are all respected to be the same in their diversity. I am not a Brit, I will never become a Brit, and you probably will never become a Luxembourg, in the way of thinking. Because I have my roots, you have your roots. And you should respect my roots, I will respect your roots. And the two we can live together very well. I love Europe, I love Luxembourg, and I love to be here now. Great, thank you very much. So, in the uh, third row. Michael Roberts, also from New Europeans. Uh, Minister, you said that any referendum on the UK's EU membership should be for British citizens. It might surprise the Commissioner to learn that what you actually mean, and what was in the Wharton Bill that fell in Parliament recently, was voting not just for British people, but for Irish, for Maltese, for Cypriot nationals, indeed for Commonwealth nationals from all around the UK's uh, uh, Commonwealth partners. And also that in the vote to be held in September in Scotland, on Scotland's future or possible uh, declaring a declaration of independence, EU citizens from Poland, from France, from Germany, will be able to vote. Why oh. all these uh, strange anomalies? Really? Uh, are they explicable? Are they justified? Yeah. And surely the minister would have yeah. another okay. thing about it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, the, I mean, very, very straightforward. The, um, the Commonwealth issue, that, uh, as I'm sure that uh, the gentleman knows, um, people from Commonwealth countries 
who have settlement rights in the United Kingdom have always been entitled to vote here. It's a historical um, sort of, sort of uh, experience. It, it derives from the fact that when these countries were originally part of the British Empire, there was a single British citizenship that covered everybody, whether they were in uh, the United Kingdom itself or a colony. And you know, it is a, simply a consequence of that approach over the years. Um, and Ireland, there's been a, you know, a special arrangement since uh, Irish independence back in the 1920s that uh, accounts for that position. The position as regards the Scottish referendum is that the Scottish franchise follows the, uh, for the referendum follows the franchise for Scottish elections. Uh, and so that, that is why there is a difference there. This is a, a referendum that the UK is facilitating but derives from the Scottish Government's electoral mandate to seek a referendum on independence. OK, thank you very much. Um, yes, the lady at the back. My name is Tamara Flanagan. I'm from EU Matters and New Europeans. Many European countries, and particularly the UK, we have a terrible information deficit. Most people in the UK aren't interested in Europe, unlike what you might think being in this room, don't have the extreme views or the pro views, but they don't have good information either. I don't think it's any surprise to say that we have an anti-European press in the UK, and this makes getting objective information, and I'm afraid to tell you that people don't count the European representation as objective information, they think it's just pro, out to the public generally. I think a, a locus for more discussion about Europe in the UK, which is not influenced by the media, or the European Commission, I'm afraid to say, would be very welcome. OK, thank you very much for that question. Um, and uh, Vivian, as well as taking the, the general point there, um, I just wondered if you'd like to comment from your own experience of the British debate on the European Union generally. Do you find it balanced and informative? <laughs> Do the people who are asked to vote know what they are going to vote about? Uh, I don't care um, uh, what kind of personal decision you take. The only thing I care for is that you take an informed decision, whatever your uh, decision be. The fact is that very often I see a completely distorted truth um, being presented. And then how do you want people to make an informed decision? They simply uh, can't. Um, if I read the papers, uh, well, I have read yesterday in a paper that the floods are the fault of Brussels. Well, uh, I didn't know I am so powerful, I can make the rain fall and the rain stop. At any rate, uh, I, I don't want, certainly not want uh, to joke about the floods because the poor people who are in the midst of it, uh, it's not for, for laughing, actually. But, but you see uh, what is behind it. I mean, you cannot discuss like that, and that is why I hope. And I hope also that before the next elections, the facts and figures will be on the table so that people can make their own advised judgment. Um, I see that in those member states where the debate is not taking place, the people do not go to vote for the European election. Why should they, for what should they vote? They don't know. Thank you very much. Well, point well made. Do you think the British public are well, well informed on Europe and are in a position to yeah. make an informed judgment in May in the European elections? Oh, I think, I think it's very dangerous to start, start to any politician or even a distinguished journalist to start making assumptions about what makes somebody qualified to, to cast a vote. You know, we've got a universal democracy and ultimately it's up to individual citizens to decide what sources of information from the media and elsewhere they want to access. And, you know, people can choose to read one of the newspapers that you know, takes a very hostile view to the EU. They can choose to read George's paper, which takes a, 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 a significantly more pro-EU view. They can listen to the BBC. So they have a choice available to them before you even get to the internet. I mean, I think the reality is that um, it's not just in the UK that there is a problem over voting in European Parliament elections. I mean, there are some countries, and I think Luxembourg is one where the turnout is relatively high. But if you look right across the EU as a whole, you have uh, relatively low turnouts compared with national elections, and you have elections that, let's be frank, tend to turn on how hard people think they want to kick 
their national government yes. uh, that they've got at, at any one yes. time. So it's 28 national elections. But to respond to the lady's points directly, everybody in the EU, whether I think it's Commission, Council, European Parliament, should be focusing on those things that are real priorities for the people whom we're all supposed to be there to represent. Cheap air flights. EasyJet tells me they would not be operating as a serious business if it were not for the that single market in, in aviation within the EU for, for domestic flights. Those things matter to people. Job creation matters to people. You know, making it easier for small businesses to grow matters to people. Those are the things that Europe should be showing it's concentrating on. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, at the back there, sir. 